for a period of some peace and then um, he, in sobriety, Johnny was sober, um, drinking Beck's. And my uh, dad, uh, who was struggling with alcohol um, and drug addiction at the time, had fallen off the wagon. And and I remember he said, why don't we send a, I want to send a picture to you to your dad of support because uh, yeah, my sister was upset with my dad. Um, and so uh, he poured a shot and, um, and, and, and kind of said, let's take a picture. Uh, I, don't, I don't drink spirits, but I, I, I know that, you know, I kind of held up in that picture. It's kind of eerie because I just think it's bizarre. He had broken this long period of sobriety that I thought was going to be the, the end of him drinking forever. I <laughs> sounds foolish now, but I, you know, held up this kind of glass with him and we sent the picture to my dad because, you know, I didn't know what else to do. And I remember thinking it was weird that he was drinking. And, um, and then the month got really crazy from that point on. It was um, a bit of um, a revolving door of accusations. Uh, he was accusing me of having affairs with, um, well, frankly, just one person I had an, I was an acquaint, I had an acquaintance with somebody and he was accusing me of, of, um, of, of being with them. And then he was accusing me of being with my friend, the one I had seen in Spain. Uh, I, I'm, you know, in these kind of arguments, nothing I do is working. I've, I, walking out of the room is me leaving him, walking away from me, you know, hey, where are you going? I'm talking to you. That it, it, it went from that to um, pulling me in by, by my arm, um, still shouting at the, about the accusations. Um, I'm trying to diffuse, diffuse the situation by trying to tell him I'm not sleeping with this person and I'm not sleeping with that person. And it was kind of, as soon as it seemed as though I had convinced him of one, there was somebody else he was sure I was sleeping with. Um, and he, he, it was a revolving door at the time. Um, a painting I, I had hanging on the wall done by my ex, who's an artist. That was, one day he, he was convinced that that was proof I was sleeping with her or having an affair with her. I didn't really love him. And all the while, I'm madly in love with him and trying to convince him. So March started with this picture of him doing a shot and he's kind of saying, let's send it to your dad to show support. And what I remember of March is just uh, like an almost, ne it's almost like it was a never ending fight. It was just, there were breaks in it. What kept me in it is because, because I kept waiting for the other shoe to drop, you know, the sobriety shoe, if you will. I kept waiting for him to get to the point where it's not supportable or anymore and he's done with it and he's ready to get clean and sober again because there commences a period of like pure joy. And it was one fight after the other, March. So, so let me start with the painting incident. Please tell the jury what happened on that particular incident with the painting. Uh, as I mentioned, the painting which had been hanging there for uh, months, uh, one day he, he kind of stayed up doing cocaine, just drinking, doing cocaine music, which is un not in and of itself that weird in my relationship with Johnny at this point, you know, like he stays up and keeps weird hours and he smokes and stuff. But the, the, he was drinking, um, brown liquor and doing a lot of cocaine. And it was like, it became clear to me in that argument, if you will, that it would, he wasn't making sense. He had effectively just taken, it seemed like a turn and had decided that the painting was the big, the, an offense that he could not forgive me for. It meant I was having an affair with my ex-partner whom I had already split with whom I had already split and it made no sense to me. So I'm, I'm trying to kind of quell the accusations by saying, you know, it's been there and what are you talking about? And it's like, that doesn't mean anything. And, you know, he was demanding I take it down. 
he eventually takes it down and tries to burn it, but was unsuccessful, luckily, because he was not, he, he didn't, he wasn't <laughs> with a, uh, one of those normal, what do you call them, thick lighters, he wasn't very successful at doing it while drinking um, to the extent he was. But I remember it was this kind of ridiculous fight, like didn't feel like it needed to be an argument, but it seemed like nothing I could do, nothing I could say. I uh, tried leaving, I um, left the room, I left the house, I eventually came back. It was it was like a whole night, of, an evening, a night, and then a morning of this. So this morning in particular, I think it was the like 22nd of, of March. There were several incidents in March though. Um, but in this particular one, he had something to go to. He was filming with Keith Richards and um, uh, Tom Waits. Well, let, let me, before you go into that part, let's, let's pull up uh, Defendant's Exhibit 161, which is already admitted into evidence, I believe, Your Honor. Yes, 161 with redactions. Is Thank you. Evidence. And I'm going to show you Defendant's Exhibit 161. And the date on this is 3-12-2013, and it's a text exchange between you and Mr. Depp. Do you see that? I do. Okay. Um, and the first one is from you to Mr. Depp. I just thought you should know there exists a book. Is that to you? Is it to Mr. Depp from you, or it's vice versa? Isn't um, it? It's Johnny texting me. Just thought you should know there exists a book titled Disco Bloodbath. And then you say, we need that book. And you say, is this about last Friday night by any chance? And he says, how can you make me smile about such a hideous moment? Uh, and I'm not gonna repeat the rest of it. Um, could you tell the jury what happened on that Friday night? Um, there were, like I said, there was a few different incidents in March. Um, I believe this one happened in the Eastern Columbia building, which is one of Johnny's penthouses. They're in downtown, so a different part of Los Angeles. And we'd sometimes go there. Uh, I remember he was accusing me, again, of um, sleeping with this artist, this musician who I'd never slept with. Um, I was denying it. I, I barely knew the person. Uh, and then he was accusing me of, of, of sleeping with my friend in, in Spain. Um, and I, I remember nothing I could do. He like called this person on the phone and screamed at, screamed at him. Um, he didn't speak English. So he was really confused as to what he was being yelled at by Johnny. Um, but I remember those were the accusations that, that was the fight that, it, but it was one to the next accusation. And I remember I was kind of doing that juggling act. I was in his, one of these fights, I believe it's this one, in his downtown ECB, we call it um, loft. And we're in the kitchen living room area and he backhands me. And, you know, it was, um, you know, he wears a lot of rings. Uh, I remember kind of just feeling like the, my lip went into my teeth and uh, it got a little blood on the wall. It, just that simple, a little bit of blood on the wall. As hard as it is, as hard as it is to explain this, I, I was so caught up in the relationship and also very occupied in defending what I only as could assume he believed these accusations um, that, you know, I didn't, I didn't internalize, like I didn't make that big of a deal of it. I'm, you know, I kind of pride myself on being tough and, you know, I don't make a big deal out of, you know, smaller injuries. And I know that sounds horrible because it, and hard maybe to understand, but um, 
I mean, my best way to cope with it is just, I kind of, you know, minimize it, make, make, make sure no one, <clears throat> make sure he knows that I'm, I'm tough and can't knock me down and I make a joke of it, clearly. Make light. I'm going to, uh, Michelle, if you can take this one down and um, bring up 170A. Did there come a time in March, Amber, where you sent a picture to your mom? Uh, yes, this is um, sometime in March, uh, 2013. I just... I. I sent it to her because I had been texting about some of the craziness and I... Objection hearsay. I'll sustain as to what she may have texted. All right, next question. Uh, it, it, without saying what you said in the text, explain why you were sending it to your mom. I was reaching out. Uh, I was very lonely in what I was living in and I wanted help. I wanted advice, help. I just wanted to talk to somebody and figure out how I can make this stop. And and is this a picture that you took of yourself in March of 2013? I did. Your Honor, I'm gonna move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 170A. Any objection? No objection. All right, 170A in evidence, you can publish the picture. Thank you, Your Honor. And how did you sustain that bruise, Amber? Um, I was, I had thrown a, um, I, well, I, Johnny slapped me. I walked away from him and that made it worse. We got into like a, a shouting match. Um, and he kind of did this thing with his body where I could tell he was going to hit me again. Um, I picked up, um, like a. I remember it kind of like a, um, like a little pot, not a pot, but, um, like a vase. And, uh, I, I remember, um, I got away from him enough as he reels back. I threw it in his direction and got, actually managed to get away before he got, it, before he got me. Um, he grabbed me by the arm, um, and he kind of just held me on the floor screaming at me. Um, I don't know how many times he hit me in the face, but uh, I, re I remember being on the floor in my apartment and I'm just, I remember thinking, how can this happen to me again? Can you bring up 170? And, and if we can, and just for, to, to start, it's 3-23-2013. And if we can scroll, scroll up. This is a text message exchange with your mom, correct? Yes, it is. Okay. And let's go, I mean, scroll down then, maybe. Your Honor, I'm going to object to hearsay. Right, let's wait until we get to the spot. All right, and is this the picture that you sent to your mom on 3-23-2013? Yes, it is. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of 170, just that, that picture that's on the text. With, with, Along no, with, with no words? Uh, well, it says it? from two weeks ago no. on it. Your Honor, uh, I'll sustain the objection. If we redact the from two weeks ago, can we admit it then? And then just have the showing that it, she sent it to her mom. May we approach your Okay.
and 70 will be in evidence with redactions. And may we publish to the jury, please? All right. And that's the picture you sent to your mom? Yes, it is, on March 23rd, 2013. Yes, it was from a previous fight. Okay. The bruise. All right, now, did you have any other altercations in March 2013 with Mr. Depp? Yes. Um, we, had, um, we had a couple of these fights in Orange that were around this time, one of which I started to tell you about the painting. You know, and I know I've interrupted you now twice on that, but I realize the jury doesn't, can you tell them what you mean by orange, at orange? Uh, sorry, orange was my apartment that I kept in Los Angeles at the time. And it was an apartment, what type of an apartment? I rented the top of a duplex. So it was a house um, with the landlord living on the bottom floor. I rented the top floor. Okay, thank you. Now. Please continue with the painting, I'm sorry. Um, I, nothing I could, it seemed like nothing I could say to Johnny would convince him. He wanted me to remove the painting. Um, and he wanted me to admit to this affair that I wasn't having. And I didn't want to admit to it because it's not true. So I held out. And he just started, I mean, he just drank more and did more cocaine. And I woke up the next morning, I think it was on the 22nd or the 23rd, I woke up in the morning and he was, the breakfast table was like cocaine and booze. And I realized that there, that I wasn't going to be able to talk my, like I wasn't going to be able to talk our, 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 our situation down. I wasn't gonna be able to talk him out of it. And he was just so convinced that I was fighting with him or, or, or at the reason that he wouldn't leave the house and he had something to go film that was important. And there were important people waiting for him. And I remember people were reaching out his assistants, his manager, sister, you know, everyone was wondering where he was. And I, kind of, I kept feeling embarrassed and unable to move this person out of my house. I couldn't calm him down. I couldn't change. He was just so intent on me admitting the details of this affair that I, I wasn't having. And me pointing out that the cocaine wasn't making his situation any better made me the bad cop. Then I'm the nag. Um, so eventually I called my sister uh, he had a kind of a buddy-buddy relationship with her at the time. And at the time, she occasionally did cocaine. I didn't, but she did. And so I was like, hey, come take over. You know, maybe you can buddy-buddy him and talk him into leaving the house, just getting out of the house. And she did. Um, I remember his assistants trying to get him out. Like, we eventually, in the evening, I think early evening, he finally... Um, agrees to leave, but I can't tell our relationship status. I can't tell if he still is convinced of these things or if he's just going to sleep it off and it's going to go back to normal sobriety, sorry kind of phase. And uh, he was still upset, but uh, like seemingly calming down. So I, I agreed to go with him. He wanted me to go to the to the, the shoot. Um, I had plans, so I kind of reluctantly agreed, but didn't want to set anything off. I didn't want to engage anymore. I didn't want to do anything that could be perceived as antagon antagonizing him or engaging more. So I went with him. We grabbed the dogs. We get in the car. We're on the way there. We're headed up S Sweetser's the street. It's a major street that um, leads up to Johnny's houses. Um, he effectively owns the end of the street. It's like a cul-de-sac. Um, so we're 
nowhere near his home, but we were driving up this street and uh, he has the window down, he's smoking. Um, it wasn't all the way down, but you know, he's constantly smoking. And at some point he starts howling out of the window and then grabs two small dogs. Well, one was Johnny's dog and one was my dog, but he grabs, if I, if I remember correctly, Boo, the, the, his, his dog, um, slightly chunkier, um, teacup Yorkie. And he grabs this teacup Yorkie and holds Boo out of the window of the moving car. And he's howling like, like an animal while holding the dog out of the window. And everyone in the car, I'll never forget it. Everyone just froze. No one did anything. And I, I too was like torn as to what I should do because I didn't want to do anything to cause him to react, drop the dog. You know, it was just this eerie moment where he's howling and holding this animal outside of the, the car window. And more than that weird memory is the, that I have a, more than that weird memory, I have a memory of everyone just kind of not really reacting to him. Like no one really kind of did anything. They, I eventually kind of pulled his arms gently back into the, to the vehicle and kind of got the dog back on the seat and we continued driving, but no one reacted. It just kind of avoided dealing with it. We get to the place, the house where he was filming this thing that he was late for, I suppose, for the day. And we walk in. Meanwhile, I've been bombarded by text messages and, and calls and conversations with everyone seemingly so stressed about- Objection, hearsay. All right. Just, just don't tell us what somebody else said, just what you observed. I understood everyone was stressed. They seemed stressed to me about the tardiness. Where is he? Let's get him there, you know, so we get him there. And no one reacts when we get in. I mean, we walk into this house where everyone was waiting for him. And everyone smiles and says, you know, hey, boss. Objection, hearsay. Okay. So, Sorry. Okay. Let's, uh, can, Michelle, can we pull up uh, 167A? I think we is B B the one that's in one sixty seven B is already in right? Oh, it's A. Okay, then go ahead, pull up A. Does your honor show that one to be in one sixty seven A? Defendants, I'm sorry. Well, you. Yeah, this might be your 167A, but it's in evidence as a plaintiff's number. I'm not sure which plaintiff's number it is. I don't need it in twice, so. I, I would agree. Do we? Your Honor, I don't think it's this version of the photograph okay, that's so been admitted. So, so it's, it's a, a different it's a, version. It's a same different photograph, but a little different. Is that what we're right? It's not the same photograph. Okay, not the All same right, photograph. Well then, then we'll go with it. Then what's your, what, okay. what number is it? Do, do you recognize this photo? Yes, I do. Please tell the jury what it is. It's uh, a picture I took of my breakfast table uh, that morning. Your Honor, I'm going to move the admission of Defendant's Exhibit 167A. 167A, any objection? Your Honor, may we approach? Sure. Seven A is in evidence. So we may we publish that. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. And Amber, you said that you took this that morning. Is that yes. correct? Could you 
tell the jury what the box is that has the property with the skull bones property of JD? Um, that's Johnny's um, drug box. I've seen it used for pills, but at the time it was um, bags of Coke, like okay. dime ba bags of Coke. Okay. And what are these white lines on the table to the left of that box? That is cocaine. Okay. Um, and do you know what is in these two glasses that have kind of a gold colored, colored liquor? Uh, yes, they're different, actually. It's confusing. They're different, um, different liquids. Uh, the one in the back in the larger glass is, um, I, I believe at the time I um, was doing these tabs, or Barocca, that's what they're called, the little tablets. And um, anyway, uh, I remember at the time that that's what I was putting in my water because I had just come back from France where they sell them. And then the brown liquid in the shot glass is um, Johnny's liquor. I don't know what it's called, but it, we kept it in the freezer. At the time, it was bef bef you know, at that time, March 2013, I hadn't, you know, um, I still didn't have the, you know, hard line. I won't even keep that, you know, in my freezer sort of attitude or posture with him. I wasn't that bold at the time, you know, I didn't like it, but I didn't have that strength. I kind of, at that time, I think was doing things like trying to pour it out when I could. So um, what is the bag, the brown bag on the left side? What is that? Uh, that's um, a dop kit. It's um, like, you know, his prescriptions and um, cigarette, tobacco, weed, things that, like that. Okay, and then above it, there appears to be a, a CD of some sort, a DVD, something. Do you recognize that? Yes, it's um, the single, I, I, I believe is what it's called, the single he was making at the time. And I think that's the song that they were filming a video for, if I'm correct. Okay. All right. Now, did you end up sending a copy of this picture to Rocky Pennington that day? I did. I sent it to my best friend at the time and, you know, was like, look at my morning. Objection. Like, hearsay. Okay. You can't say what you said, but you sent it to your friend, correct? Mm -hmm. Let's go to, to 167, friend. please. And is that the email in which you sent this picture to Rocky Pennington on 322, yes. 2013. Your Honor, I'd like to move the admission of the picture with the redaction of the message on it, uh, with the top with identifier redactions, and we take out the rest of it. Uh, all right, any objection? No objection. All right, so we'll do those redactions, 167 in evidence with redactions. 